y'all. Lisa with Find Us Camping here. Today we are at one of those overnight stays that we talk about all the time at a Harvest Host. We are in Fairhope, Pennsylvania at Hillegas Sugar Camp with Kyle, and he's going to tell us the process of how they make all kinds of maple goodies, maple syrups and candies and spreads and barbecue sauces. So, Kyle, tell us all about it. Uh, thank you. Um, you're, we're at uh, Hillegas Sugar Camp here. We tap approximately 9,000 taps. Um, all our taps are away from here. We truck in the sap. All our woods are tapped on a tubing and a vacuum system. The tubing, we have the 516 tubing. This, this here is called a drop line with the 516 tap that goes in the tree down to a T. And you tie five to six taps together with the 516th and then run it into a main line, which goes uh, horizontally across the hillsides every approximately 100 feet. Um, and then your main lines tie into what we call a wet dry line system, which is a double line, typically both larger lines, but the bottom line is for the sap and the top line is for your vacuum flow. Um, it's to maximize your vacuum into your woods to get the, the most vacuum to the tap hole as possible. Okay. Um, in maple, we try to pull approximately 27 inches of vacuum. The vacuum helps to draw the sap away from the tree and it can uh, also improve your sap flow on poor days. Um, the wet dry lines run into a releaser that separates the sap from the vacuum. The vacuum is hooked into the top of the releaser, the sap drops out the bottom. Um, there's and how much sap does it take to make, you know, like a typical little jar of uh, maple syrup? Well, uh, the, Cause I know it they seems always like say <laughs> it takes approximately 40 gallons of sap to make a gallon of syrup. Uh, in our area, we've had poor sugar content recently and we have a lot of younger trees. So we've been up close to 70 gallons of sap to make a gallon of syrup the last two years. Wow. Um, that's a lot of sap. Off of our 9,000 taps last year, we hauled in approximately 200,000 gallons of sap. Wow. So. Okay. And turned that into about 2,600 gallons of syrup. These are our reverse osmosis machines. Uh, after the sap gets hauled in, it gets dumped into a tank out back. It feeds through the reverse osmosis, which separates the sugar from the water. Um, the sap passes through a membrane. This is a cut out of a membrane under pressure approximately 400 psi the water can pass through the membrane but the sugar can we can adjust the flow off the center of the membrane to the desired sugar content that we are looking for okay. we run through two reverse osmosis machines uh, we pass through the larger one first take it up to approximately uh, six percent sugar and then run it through the second machine that will take it up to the 12 to 14 percent sugar that we boil okay. from the reverse osmosis machines it pumps up overhead into a tank and then we uh, feed it into the evaporator that's a lot of work for a little bit of syrup yes yes <laughs> <laughs> um the reverse osmosis make it a lot easier because they're getting rid of probably 95 percent of the sap before we actually boil so that saves us a lot of effort um, this is our evaporator. It's a 5x14. The back pan is what you call a flute pan. It has channels that are approximately an inch wide that have sap on one side and fire gets on the other side. Um, that's where the majority of the sap is evaporated within the evaporator. Um, if you stretch our pan out, the base of this pan is approximately 40 feet wide with surface area on the bottom. Uh, it feeds from the flue pan into the front pan, which is just a flat sectional pan. Um, it starts in either the back or the side. We can reverse flow. Feeds through, and as it gets to the other side of the pan, we draw it off as syrup. Syrup boils at seven degrees over the boiling point of water, which would be approximately 219 degrees, which varies depending on elevation and barometric pressure. Um, we use an automatic draw off to draw off the syrup. So we set it based on a temperature and use a hydrometer to check the density. Um, once it comes off the evaporator, we filter it through a filter press, which is a series of plates and frames. The syrup comes in through the frames and goes out through the plates. There is a filter paper in between 
and we had a diatomaceous earth, a filtering aid with it that helps catch all the dirt and impurities and then they just filter back out. Surf coming in is kind of cloudy and when it comes back out it's crystal clear. Um, from the filter press we fill our stainless steel barrels. Uh, we use 40 gallon stainless steel barrels. Fill them. They look like a bunch of kegs sitting around the shop. <laughs> yep. We fill them hot uh, and they will seal like a canning jar so we can keep it for years if we need to. Okay. Um, from them we heat it up throughout the year and bottle, take it back to 180 degrees, refilter and bottle it as we need in different sizes. Um, the syrup, there are four grades of maple syrup. There's the golden delicate, which is the lightest, the amber rich, which is your basic table grade, dark robust, also a table grade that if you like a stronger maple flavor, and then the very dark strong is anything darker than dark robust. The flavor is supposed to go along with them. So your golden delicate is a very, very mild maple flavor. We typically- so the darker it gets, the, the darker maple it gets, the stronger it the maple flavor. Okay. Um, we typically only bottle the amber rich and the dark robust. If somebody requests, we will bottle the others. The light is something if you're not a maple, pure maple syrup person, light is- <laughs> That's me. The best way to go, because <laughs> it's not real strong. It reminds you of your Aunt Jemima's. Okay, all right. Or your so what you buy corn, on the shelf corn in the grocery syrup store. based syrup. Right, okay. Um, it well, has, that makes sense. It has a lot more mild color, maple like flavor. A, yeah, okay. Um, we use, mainly use our light syrup to make candies and creams and the dark to make most of our other products that we make. And then we use our very dark for our sauces. Okay. I can't wait to get some barbecue sauce. So on a tree, when do you, when do you normally tap them? Uh, we typically tap the trees uh, between or normally the early January, early to mid January, and our season will run through approximately the 1st of April, depending on weather. I mean, we have years where we're done by the 1st of March, and we have years where we really don't hardly get started till the 1st of March. So it just all depends on the weather. We need freezing nights and warm days to make for a good sap flow. And one tree will do approximately how many taps? Uh, trees, uh, we do not go over two taps in the woods. We'll do, uh, tap down the smallest approximately eight inches as long as it looks like a healthy tree and go up to a second tap when you can reach your arms around and not touch your hands we want a second one and so um, how much sap can you get out of a tree like in a uh, season estimate it varies we've had woods over the last couple of years that have produced up over 35 gallon of sap per tap and wow. we've had ones that only produced 10 gallon of sap per tap so i mean for for a while we were averaging right in the 20 gallon of tap range but we've put some new tubing out in a few woods and new tubing makes for better, better okay. sap And you flow. can tap the same tree. We like if you tap it this year, you can tap yep. it again next year, yep. just in a different location. Yep, Is we that... re-tap the same trees every year. Um, as long as you move over two to three inches over and two to three inches up or down from a previous hole, okay. you're, you're good to re-tap the same tree. So back in the old days, when they didn't have all the fancy equipment, they would drill a hole in the tree with this so this is like what the, a cutout of what a tree that's been tapped looks like. They'd put the tap in it and then they'd hang this sugar keeler from the, from the tap, hanging out of the tree right here and collect it. So this was before there were tubes coming out of trees, connecting to trees, connecting, I mean, connecting to bigger tubes. So here's your tap right here. Mm -hmm. So it still seems like a whole lot of work to make a bottle of syrup or any of these other fancy things they make, but we've come a long way since this. Mm. Yeah, I like that. What is it? Maple mustard. 